Hello and welcome to another standard game to video. Today we're taking a look at a blue-black vehicles deck that has a nice combo finish with Mind Link Mech copying our Blood Letter. This 4 mana 2 4 flyer says if an opponent would lose life during our turn, they lose twice that much life instead. So this is great if we can already be attacking with some evasive creatures that don't get blocked easily, so we can double their damage right away. And Blood Letter gets even better in multiples since the damage doubling will also stack very nicely, so if we get multiple blood letters in play we can win the game out of nowhere, and that's exactly what we're trying to do with our Mind Link mech, a 3 mana vehicle, 4 3 flying, and crew cost is only 1, so very easy to crew with all our creatures, and whenever the mech becomes crewed for the first time each turn, until end of turn it becomes a copy of target's non-legendary creature that crewed it this turn, but it's still a 4 3 vehicle that has flying. So Mind Link mech crewed by our blood letter will turn it into a copy of blood letter, all of a sudden we have 2 of them in play, we're also attacking with a 4-powered creature, so just by itself this can hit the opponent for 4, then the damage gets doubled, doubled again, and that can already present 16 damage basically out of nowhere, which is pretty awesome. And then if we have another small creature attacking, we could just potentially hit the opponent for 20 damage in a single attack step. Now we also have a solid backup plan in case we don't draw our two specific cards. We've got another powerful vehicle in the new subterranean schooner, 2 mana, 3, 4, crew cost is also just one, and when it attacks, target creature that crewed it this turn explores, so we either find more lanes, or we can potentially get some plus one counters going to grow our smaller creatures. And we've got plenty of small creatures to help crew these two vehicles, between our Spyglass Siren, a 1-1 flyer that creates a map token when it enters, another way of exploring. Then we've got Iker Drinker, a 1-1 lifelink, and lifelink is also a very nice keyword to copy with a mind link mech when facing aggressive decks, as we can now make a 4-3 flying a lifelink and then if the Icar Drinker gets put into our graveyard, maybe if it died, or maybe if we just put it in the graveyard with Explore, then we can still pay a black to incubate two, and eventually end up with a 2-2 Phyrexian after paying the two mana activation cost. So Icar Drinker is also quite synergistic here. And then the Reckoner Raid also fits into our aggressive game plan, where we want to apply pressure quickly. It will drain the opponent with the first two chapters. That damage could also potentially be doubled by a Blood Letter on the battlefield, and then eventually turns into a 2 to creature with menace that has a secret ability that usually doesn't come up but we're taking full advantage of it here vehicles we control have menace so now all of a sudden the schooner has menace and the mech will have both flying and menace making it almost impossible to block so it makes it much easier to combo kill the opponent with our blood letter once we get it down and then another 1-1 one, one that's perfect to crew our vehicles is the Deep Cavern Bat. 1-1 one, one flying a lifelink, so once again a lifelink great with her mech. And then when it enters we can disrupt the opponent's hand by taking away a non-land card for as long as we control the Deep Cavern Bat. And then rounding out the deck, we've got a bit more spot removal with Go for the Throat to deal with larger creatures. We've got four copies of the Gumdrop Poisoner, which also gives us a one mana play with Tempt with Treats, making a food token at instant speed. And then we've got a 3 2 lifelink afterwards that can potentially take out opposing creatures when it enters the battlefield. So it also pairs very nicely with our existing life gain from Icar Drinker. Reckoner Raid also can enable the Poisoner to take out smaller creatures, and the Deep Cavern Bats can also attack first and then play Poisoner's second main to take something out, or we could also sacrifice the food token first and then take out something more substantial, and then once again another lifelinker to go with our mind link mech. And then I'm also playing one copy of Akal Pakal, which is also great with all these cheap artifacts. At first glance we're not really an artifact deck, but we do have eight vehicles, and then the Siren makes a map token, the Drinker makes an incubator token, and then by using the Poisoner during the opponent's turn to make a food token we can potentially enable Akal Pakal twice per turn cycle since it checks in each end step, so that can also provide a lot of card advantage to help assemble the Mind Link Blood Letter combo. And then our mana base needs a lot of black mana to support the triple black, even though we also want to play Siren on turn 1, but luckily we have a lot of blue-black untapped dual lands early with uh, Dark Slick Shores, Underground River, and then we've got a couple basics, and then of course Soaring City and the Abandoned Mire offer a tiny bit more utility, and then two copies of the Restless Reef as a creature land that can also help apply a bit more pressure, typically want to mill ourselves in case we mill over Icar Drinker, which can also provide a bit of utility out of the graveyard. So so yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand could be better, missing a Mind Link mech and some cheap creatures to crew Schooner, but I'll give it a shot.
opponent with a Mishra's Foundry, so likely monocolor aggro deck. Turn two, it's going to be a vendor. We did draw Siren. I think I still like keeping up Go for the Throat, and then next turn we can double spell Schooner and Siren. If an Adlin shows up here, we want to take it out. It's going to be a Skrull, if that's fine. Anything else? Well, Spellbook Vendor triggers. And goes for itself, so we'll take it out here. And then now, could also go for Icker Drinker and Schooner, but uh, Siren plus Schooner seems good enough. And then next turn we'll be able to fly over with Siren. And uh, Crew Schooner with a Bloodletter, perhaps. There's Adlin. So they might have had it last turn, but wanted to play around removal by committing Skrelv first. Well, they don't have a good attack. And there is hope we can outrace them in the air with a double bloodletter especially. Although... Won't be attacking with a schooner, although I guess we can. The only danger is Iganjo for one mana, taking out the schooner. But otherwise we do get to uh, explore for free essentially. I think it's worth it. And I would rather them taking out a schooner with Iganjo than a bloodletter anyway. And do we want a bat? Not really. Can't take away an Iganjo. And the next turn we can double spell. Would rather look for a Mind Link mech or just another Bloodletter, I guess. And yeah, opponent had an Iganjo. Thalia, we don't mind. And they're getting in with Mishra's Foundry. So yeah, they're gonna get in a healthy attack here. But double Bloodletter might just get the job done. Could also uh, explore with a map token, but I think we'll be playing the Drinker. Opponent's down to two. Play Drinker and pass. So yeah, had we explored and we found a no land card, we could have won the game right now. But uh, there's the risk that we miss and then die on the way back. So this seems safe enough. We've got both black and blue creatures to block, in case they want to activate Skrelv. And then we just need one flyer to survive, and our opponent explodes. Sweet, on to the next one. Our hand's a little awkward, since we can't actually play any of our black 1-drops on curve. So we're looking at turn 2 schooner, turn 3 we can crew and attack. Yeah, I mean, it's not the worst. At least Poisoner is good in multiples, and we've got an Acre Drinker as another life linker. But uh, definitely far from perfect. Opponent blue white looks like control. Alright, so having a vehicle and a bat to have a look are both nice. Although the Poisoner are not at its best against control. Shines against more aggressive decks. Okay, so we can double spell Bant and Icker Drinker. And have a look here. So Smite can't answer Schooner. Revelry can gain them some life back. 
but yeah, the most impactful cards, I would say, still Wandering Emperor and eventually a Glyph Bridge. Although our vehicle also helps play around it a little bit. So let's just take the Wandering Emperor. And then I guess we can play Drinker and crew with a Drinker as opposed to the Bats. And putting that in the graveyard is good value since we can still incubate with it. Okay, so we're looking for a blood letter, even though we're missing a third black source at the moment. Mindlink mech is also welcome. Vehicles help play around sweeper effects. Right, opponent goes for rivalry, and then they could still smite as well. If we attack with a schooner, they could both block and smite to finish it off. So what I might do instead is just attack with an Icar Drinker. And then a Poisoner can maybe finish off some other token. So yeah, let's get in with Icar Drinker. And then if they just take it, Poisoner can still finish off a 1-1 token. Which is probably the play alongside Incubating. Don't care about the food token too much. Okay, another band could now try to snipe the Glyph Bridge. And see where we're at. Although they could then, of course, channel a Soaring City as well. So I think it's just going to be attack with maybe everyone now, if they want to smite the Bat, be my guest. They're probably going to smite something bigger, since they're going to Glyph Bridge next turn. And then we'll take it from there. Their opponent chumps, and then Smite could exile the Drinker. Nope, goes for a bat anyway. Okay, that's fine. So now the question is, do we take Emperor or do we take Glyph Bridge? The bridge is probably more threatening still. Emperor only deals with one creature. Although they could still thirst into another Sweeper, of course. Right, opponent just with a Glyph Bridge and Emperor, and then the two channel lanes. So we'll take the bridge. And then just play another Poisoner, I think. Keep up the pressure. And then I'm just not going to tap the band to play around Emperor. They could still go for end of turn, bounce with Soaring City. So it's going to be a bit tricky. Alright, now their schooner is nice. So now I'm less devastated if they use this turn to exile schooner with a Wandering Emperor. So we want to crew with, probably still not with the Incubator token, but let's just go with the Icar Drinker. And then tempt him to exile Schooner pretty much. Alright, that worked. my people must contend with me. Schooner down. And don't need to go for the throat. 
Hopefully another schooner and pass. Opponent is going to cash in the Emperor. So we can expect them to bounce the bat and then replay Glyph Bridge next turn. So I'm not activating the Incubator token. And then now we're fine to uh, tap the bat to crew Schooner. If they want to use Iganjo on it, that's probably okay. And that's another drinker going to the graveyard. So you can expect a couple trades. Our opponent will like Ganjo. So you don't need to worry about Glyph Bridge for another turn. We've got the mana to animate both incubators. And then, yeah, and an all out attack may do it next turn. And does another Wandering Emperor save them? Remove a three power creature, gain to up to 11. I guess now we can go for the throw to our own creature to deny the life gain as well. Let's find out. But a one soaring city is not enough. It's going to be a whale. Okay, so then they'll still have the soaring city available. So they will be able to survive and then play Glyph Bridge next turn. But we will be left with one creature at least. And then bats. I guess it's fine to keep on top. As a flying creature that can take away her removal spell. They're going to bounce a token, and then still take 7 down to 2. So yeah, if their play is just play Glyph Bridge, that's not good enough. Could have considered using Go for the Throat on my own Drinker, just to have another Incubator token ready to go. So their last card needs to be something relevant. And, uh, yeah, I guess we can play Bat first in case they have an Elspeth Smite in hand. And, uh, did not quite get to see what they had, but looks like we got there. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a reasonable hand. Turn 1 Reckon Raid, turn 2 Schooner. And then the Bat's perfect for crewing it. While we can eventually also give our Vehicles Menace with a Road Captain. And against a Red Aggro, it's nice to have some life gain. I could play another Bat, but I'm still liking the Schooner. Looks like Red-White tokens. So hopefully we can dodge an early Demolition. Just going for a treasure off a Charming Scoundrel. And an attack for two. Get to transform our Reckoner Raid. And then have a look with our bait. Okay, it looks like... Something a little bit different, double Devilish Valet, and they do have a Gleeful Demolition in hand, as well as Adversary. So yeah, the Valet plus Demolition is quite scary. I think Demolition is still what we should take as a more unique card. That's very good at enabling both Valet and Adversary. And then can crew with a bat to make a larger lifelinker maybe. And then still have a road captain on defense. Okay, so 
Hoping to find a blood letter here, another two drop we can play alongside our bat would be fine. And it's gonna be adversary probably pumping the team here. Could still trade our road captain for one of their creatures. Could also pass with the Soaring City available to try and shrink their team down at instant speed. So we've got a couple options. And our opponent's gonna hang back. Find another Reckoner Raid. Okay. So... Let's say we... Crew the Schooner, attack with it. Opponent can double block Epicure Scoundrel, then we bounce Adversary. If they block with Adversary itself, I guess we're happy with the trade. And then it would take out the second creature as well, once it loses the plus one plus one. So most likely they would take the hits. I'll try this. Find a reef. Opponent takes it. And then bats plus Reckon Raid. Looks okay. Sadly, can't play the tapped reef since we wanted to keep up Ottawara and then take a valet and keep up the pressure. Now our opponent can attack back with adversary, gaining four. And I'll leave the rest back. Okay, so we can play the Drinker, still keep up Orawara, or play the tapped Restless Reef. And then, are we still interested in crewing and attacking with the Schooner? Yeah, I mean, Bouncing Adversary is still pretty good value. Opponent doesn't have a fourth lane to replay it necessarily. Now they could also double block with Valet and a different creature, and then shrinking down their team only takes out the Valet. But then I guess Schooner would survive. So let's go with the Drinker. And then attack with everyone but Road Captain. And then putting that in the graveyard's good value. It's a little suspicious that we didn't play a Reef here. So they might suspect some interaction. Alright, point's gonna bite, so we get to take out Valet after bouncing Adversary. Would still love to top deck a Blood Letter with a bunch of flying and menace creatures that can connect. Putin goes digging. Epic gear is fine. Possible they have another demolition here to make some goblin tokens, but nope, Pun is too far behind. And yeah, the disruption from Bant got it done. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand is uh, maybe missing some one mana plays, so we might not have the most efficient turns coming up, but it's still keepable. Schooner with a bat to help crew it. And a bit of spot removal. Turn one visitor, so our opponent on green white enchantments. That could be a tough matchup. And lots of creatures we want to take out with a gopher throat. Might have to play bats before they empty their hand, as opposed to playing schooner first. Yeah, I think we have to go for the bat here. Maybe take away a Calyx. And yeah, there it is, leaving them with Radiant Grace and Twinblade Geist. Still some pretty good ones, but uh, Calyx would be a little scarier. Okay, 
and then they might move all in on the Geist, since it has double strike. And there's a Radiant Grace. So we've got a few options next turn, including go for the throat. Could also place Kooner and pass. And then we can at least hold off the smaller creatures or trade for Geist. Don't hate that idea. Now if this uh, transforms, our creatures will enter tapped, which could be pretty annoying. But it does mean I get to trade for Geist and then still have go for the throat for whatever creature they try and enchant with the uh, Twin Blade Invocation. So we can kind of play the control role here. And we're not out racing the Geist anytime soon, so might as well. And then if they go for the invocation, they might have still had a card stuck in hand, but opponent just had a land. Okay, so is there any point in playing a bat when our opponent's empty-handed? It's still a creature to add to the board, and then we're gonna go for the throat here. May as well attack since we're not blocking. And then I'll let them play their turn out. Don't know if the discount from Naturalist is going to be super important. But uh, yeah, now I'll go for the throats to remove some enchantments. Alright, so Reign of Truth, not the end of the world here. Only two enchantments. And double blood letter is going to be awesome. Back to back. Twin Blade Geist is acceptable. So next turn we're getting in for four, and then double the damage, double the damage again. Opponent is down to one. And at 11 life, we should be able to survive here. Alright, Royal Treatment on the Geist. Does not trigger Visitor, at least, since that's only when you cast an enchantment. So they get us down to five, and the Reckon Raid can get the job done here. Also gets doubled by the blood letter. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and we've got a decent hand. Just missing our blood letter for the combo on turn four. And then the band can try and take away some interaction that could mess up our combo. Up against turn one mountain, so red aggro. Well, at least mind link mech is pretty solid with all these life linkers. Now we could play schooner as well. I think it's still bats. And then next turn mech. So we'll have two life linkers to turn this on potentially. While we get to take away a potential burn spell. Yeah, let's take the play with fire. And then I'm not planning to block, so may as well attack. Take three. And then maybe attack with the Deep Cavern Bats. And leave the mech on defense. Now with a top deck to Lightning Strike, we may regret crewing it. Opponent just jams a squee. 
So they don't have a good attack. Alright, never mind. So this is now a 4-3 lifelink. Eat their squee. And another mind link is perfect. So this one gets to attack. And gain four. Still reasonable to play Schooner, keep up, go for the throat, just to have a more efficient turn in terms of mana. Although I'm not hitting a mind link mech either. Let's go for the double spell. This wave they, let's say, top deck to pump spell, we can block. They go for the pump spell and we'll still have a go for the throat available. Godric, I'm also happy to take out. So we can test the waters here. Right, they had a play with fire. So now if we go for the throat Godric, we still get to keep our schooner. And that's enough for a concession. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Missing our Bloodletter, but we've got the mana to potentially cast it on turn 4. And then, uh, yeah, solid curve of Reckon Raid into Bat into Mindlink Mech. Or we can try and find a spot for a tap to Reef. Put on blue whites and an Enigma jewel. Okay, something spicy here. Let's see what we're working with. Okay, they've got removal and spades. Only two lands. So I think we just have to take get lost and then uh, hope to run them over before they get to land their planeswalkers. Bloodletter, alright, so next turn we could just win the game if there's no interaction, so that's exciting. And we know every card in hand, so they would have to top deck something. Sea Shark, alright, so now our opponent does get to chump, but I guess we have Menace as well from their road captain, so I think they still die. So we can crew here. Double blood letter attack. And that's six. Double twice. And <laughs> that's 24 more damage. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. We've got our two vehicles, creatures to crew them. And then we have to decide our sequencing. Now that we drew another schooner, I think it's going to be tapped, reef on one, turn two schooner, turn three schooner plus another drinker. Take it from there. Opponent on blue white control. Does not have a counter for schooner. And yeah, vehicles are pretty nice in a matchup like this. Field of Ruin probably going to deal with our creature land. Okay, so I think step one, play Drinker. And get an attack in. And then most likely play another Schooner. All right, we'll get some map tokens in return at least. A revelry, not getting any life, just making a pair of 1-1s. One and, uh, yeah, now we could cruise Cooner, attack, play mech, just to add another vehicle to the board. Now with an untapped land, I think we get Reckon Raid going as well. Alright, so we're diversifying our threats with a few vehicles, which will eventually gain menace as well. 
And if we ever top deck a blood letter, that could be quite devastating. And go for the throw, it's not at its best. So I'll go for Siren. Opponent likely to have a Wandering Emperor to exile my Mind Link mech if I crew it here. But what's the alternative? Only crew Schooner, then they get rid of that one. Or we can go exploring and grow the Acre Drinker a bit. Which I guess is another way to do it here. Yeah, losing one of our vehicles would be a setback. But I think I'm still crewing both. And then I'm not going to play a second drinker into a potential sunfall since I don't want my creatures getting exiled when they can provide value from the graveyard. So we'll crew. And crew. Attack and see what happens. Yep. You started this fight, but I'm going to end it. So that one's down. And a blood letter I'll keep, but sadly without Mind Link Mech now. Now we could still explore a bunch just to grow our team. I think exploring once is reasonable. Just to get another counter on the schooner. And then I'll keep up go for the throat. I'm going for a counter. Remember your training. And we'll just take it out now. Okay, so I'm not really inclined to want to play a Blood Letter here. We do want to try and take out the Wandering Emperor, hope they don't have a second. Could get busy with Restless Reef, and then make them use a Field of Ruin, basically, and then it could still have a spot removal spell afterwards. Let's see what happens. Milling myself could mill more Icar Drinkers, so that's probably the plan. And then, uh, yeah, hope they don't have more instant speed removal, pretty much. Could have also waited for them to field the ruin, just so I could crew schooner with a reef. But the timing has to line up. So at least they won't have another emperor here. I think I'm fine sending just one creature at the Emperor, since if they have removal, they'll likely take out Schooner anyways. And then another Blood Letter I can keep. Damage happens, Emperor down. I'm never done. And then, sure, we'll grow the Schooner some more. So just Blood Letter plus Kooner can represent 10 damage, opponent goes taking with Deluge. Even if they find another Sunset Revelry, that might not keep them alive. Since we have a bunch of menacing creatures too now. Alright, they found it. So I guess at 18, it's still gonna be pretty close since we'll be able to deal 12 damage with our creatures on board if our opponent double chumps the schooner, which seems likely. But uh, yeah, we've got another blood letter, so even if they wipe the board, unless it's a farewell, we should still be okay. And I guess we can also explore with a map to grow one of our evasive creatures here. So I guess we'll start there. Find a land. Yeah, if this were a Mind Link mech, it would certainly be game. 
Schooner is still great, but not quite as good. So your opponent has to double chump Schooner. Since it has Menace. And then still take 12. And then if they tap out for a non-farewell sweeper, we can still follow up with a blood letter to crew schooner once again. All right, let's see what happens. I guess we also have a restless reef, which could get busy, although not quite enough by itself. Well, they don't seem to have an immediate answer here, so that's promising. If they let us untap, then what's the play? Might just be activate Restless Reef, crew schooner with, let's say, an Icker Drinker and attack all out. All right, their opponent seems to have disconnected, so we'll enact our game plan. Drinker, crew schooner, animate Reef, and attack all out. And they'll need multiple instant speed plays to stay alive here. But it seems like they're not here anymore. So yeah, we didn't get to combine Bloodletter with Mindlink Mech this game. Kind of felt like we had to go for it, even though Wandering Emperor was likely to remove it. But uh, yeah, just having a bunch of vehicles against control is pretty solid. Creature lands are also very helpful. And then the occasional bat to disrupt the opponent's hand can also help out. And then we just don't have a lot of dead cards in the matchup, just a handful of go for the throat. And yeah, her opponent explodes. Awesome. As we get to a rank up here. So yeah, even though we didn't get to combo off as much as I would have liked, the deck still seems pretty solid, even if we don't get to combine mech with bloodletter. And yeah, bloodletter is still very good in multiples. Mindlink mech is still good with our lifelink creatures especially, and with a road captain giving it menace. So there's still plenty of synergy, even if we don't draw our two specific combo pieces, which is a good sign for any deck that it doesn't specifically rely on the combo, but can still win games without it. So yeah, overall pretty happy with where the deck ended up. Seems like it has game against aggro and against control, so it should be able to strike a balance quite nicely. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.